You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. Here, we'll help you unlock the secrets of entrepreneurship and self-development. This is your host, Alex Quinn. I'm a full-stack marketing executive and global keynote speaker. Get ready to get real-world knowledge from top-level entrepreneurs and world-class business leaders. Hey guys, Randy Zuckerberg here. Hi everyone, it's Neil Patel and you're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle. This is the motherfucking CEO, Andy Frisella. You're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle with Alex Quinn. Become an authority and thought leader in your niche. Join a free private community of entrepreneurs and professionals looking to grow their business and optimize their performance. Get easy to learn resources and materials that empower your personal and financial success. Easily accessible for free on desktop and mobile app. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to access now. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Enjoy the rest of the episode. This episode is part one of a two-part series with co-founder of MPH Club, Lee Sustiel. What's going on, everyone? This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. On today's episode, we have Lee from MPH Club. What's going on, Lee? Good, man. How are you? Lee, I, bro, I've been wanting to have you on the podcast for a hot minute because you were... You're one of the key factors to the development of my marketing career ever since I was, I think we met when I was 18 and I officially started working for you when I was 19 years old. I was a little shit. Um, and I, I knew what I was doing, I guess. Like I, I knew I wanted to do business, but I never really had a direction. And when I first started working here at MPH, I really had, I had a lot of opportunity. So I really wanted to bring you on here, bro. But before we do, why don't we, you break down for everyone what MPH Club is and what you guys are doing right now? Oh, of course. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you even coming here and, and being on the podcast as well. Um, listen, it's an honor to, to be involved and uh, a little, little bit about MPH Club. So we started the company about almost 10 years ago now, uh, approaching our 10th year. So uh, we are a luxury exotic car rental company at the end of the day. Uh, our inventory sustains on only high-end exotic cars, and you can rent them on a daily rental, weekly rental, or monthly rental, or whatever the case may be. Um, that being said, we're located in South Florida. We service all the South Florida area, and um, you helped us uh, to get to this point. So we'll, we'll touch on that a little more, for, I'm sure. Yeah, man. So guys, uh, just some context. We're sitting at the Opelaka Executive Airport in Miami where all the private planes land, where all the celebrities land. And you guys had a big vision for the business 10 years ago when we first met. I remember how, how we met. It was funny because at the time I was doing car shows. I was doing car events. Yes. And what was it? Vintage? Vintage, vintage works. works. Yes, I remember Vintage <laughs> Works. Bro, that event that we did was insane. We got shut down. <laughs> Bro, I, I, okay, so we started, we had a vision when we first started and we didn't really know where to go, what to do. Uh, so we wanted to get our name out there and you came up with the idea of putting a car event. I'm like, all right, I guess that makes sense. You know, a lot of people show up and we could, we could talk about it. We, were, we, had a, we had a goal of, I think, 100 people or maybe like, you know, 50 cars. Like, yeah, yeah we can make that happen. Cool. Uh, we went around a couple of different locations to look for a location. You brought up the attention of the Marlin Stadium when the it was Marlin. brand new. It just, just opened up recently, right? And uh, you made it happen to get that location. Um, we made the event happen. We start promoting. I think it was like literally two posts on Instagram. And we had roughly about, what, three, four hundred cars that show up. It was really crazy. Yeah. So we were in a, you guys, just so you could get a visual aspect. We're in, we're in a parking garage and we pretty much filled up like the whole top half of the parking garage with exotics. With you know, Some people had classics some people had tuners. DuPont Registry was out there. Lamborghini Miami. Uh, there was vendors. And it was just a family environment. It was a really good way for for us to get the name out there. And I think that was one of the first times where I really was able to put something massive together with connections that I would have never been able to have before. Because at the time, the company was really young, but you guys knew a lot of people and you guys were already business owners. Yeah, You were you had already been running businesses and you already know what you were doing with MPH Club. So it was very easy for me to come in and analyze who you had around you, what you had, and be able to create something around it. And I've always been very grateful. And I talk about you all the time with so many people. I travel the world speaking on different stages and I always talk about MPH Club because you guys gave me an opportunity. You guys made me marketing director at 19 years old. Nobody would have ever allowed me to do that. But more than that, it was a matter of trust because you guys have tens of millions of dollars in cars. Like, how do you trust somebody to, uh, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was just, we knew from the beginning that we all had a vision to really take the company somewhere and, 
we were just on the same frequency. So I want this to be the moment for you to know that I'm extremely grateful for everything you've done for me. And I wouldn't be able to be doing a lot of the things right now if it wasn't for me being at MPH Club all the time that I was here. Stop bro. you making me blush. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Uh, listen, yeah. I saw the hunger in you. I saw the, the drive in you. And you need to be pointing in the right direction because you were going all over the place. Yeah. So I helped you make that happen. And I'm, you know, I love that, man. I love yeah. you. You're an amazing guy. Yeah, brother. You did a great job. Appreciate you, so, man. I really appreciate that. I was talking to my parents about you today because they were like, man, you guys did so many cool things together. Like we did events, we did photo shoots, we set, lined up cars in front of dead hangers. We got fined left and right because of the <laughs> event. We had the police department shut us down. We were limited to 50 cars. We ended up with 350 cars. <laughs> Um, yeah, the fire department shut us down and that, that was, that was fun. That, that was, was a cool fun. experience. I'm not gonna lie. So, so let me put you guys into a perspective. So the first time I was doing an event, uh, it was called, it was the vintage works. It was my first company. I had a business partner at the time. We really were really trying to get a lot of work done. So we decided to do a promotional video and we reached out to a ton of car companies locally. And you guys were one of them at that time. You guys, I believe you had two cars. Yeah, we started, we started with three cars. You started with three cars, yeah. right? So you came to the event, uh, we shot the promotional video, and then I remember at the event, you, you told me, you are like, hey, why don't you swing by the office this week or one of these days and we'll chat. And I remember you guys were still in the jet in, in the first jet hangar. Orion Jet Center, yeah. Orion Jet Center, that was a massive office, bro. Yeah. I remember walking in, I think there was, you guys were just moving in, I think there was like three or four desks and the couches in the back. 2,800 square feet with literally two desks. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Overlooking a bunch of airplane, like private jets. And, and then we hit it off. You were like, Hey man, like you were trying to do this and trying to do that. And that's where, where I really started to learn from you and everybody in the company and everything that was going on. And I want to talk to you about something very specific that stayed with me because after a while of working here, I had many opportunities. I was doing marketing. I, I was doing anything that we could do to grow the business. And one of those things was driving, you know, D doing driving and doing proms or driving. Oh my God. Yeah. Driving, chauffeur gigs. Yes. Dri driving certain people around. And, that was a great opportunity for me because a lot of these people are people that have been able to stay in my business network to this day. Yep. Um, and I would have never been able to do that if you didn't give me that opportunity. Um, and, and that's something I want people to learn from because my guests on, on this, like my, my listeners on this podcast, a lot of times are people who are trying to start a business and are trying to get into bigger networks, but really don't know how to do it. And at the time I was marketing director here, but there were side gigs for me to make extra money and I did it, right? But if I would have never accepted that, I would have never met a lot of people that I was able to meet. Um, I would have not have an advertising agency right now because the reason I started an advertising agency and why this podcast exists is because the advertising agency got popular. I got popular and people wanted to hear about it. And that was inspiration from Jordan Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. And because of you, I met Jordan Zimmerman and I was blown away by everything that he was doing. I mean, I was driving him to close massive deals into his building and to his private jet and all these things. And it really lit a fire under my ass. I'm like, I want, I like marketing. I've been doing this. I've been doing all of these things. I want to make a name for myself in marketing. And just like Jordan was many other people that I've been able to do amazing things with right now. Like we, we, we sat down, like Michelle and I sat down like two weeks ago and we went back and we tied you and MPH club to all the amazing things that have happened to me in the last 10 That's years. That's awesome. <laughs> and if it wasn't for me working here, I wouldn't be a public speaker globally. Because I met Gil from Luxury World Traveler mm -hmm. through you. You introduced him to me. I met Anish with you. I met a bunch of great people with you, Billionaires Club. And I I've been able to make great money with a lot of those guys. And had you never given me that opportunity, I wouldn't have been able to do it, right? So I've always told you it speaks a lot to people to trust people who maybe are younger than them and are not ready. Because when I got here, I maybe wasn't ready. I maybe didn't have any idea what I was doing, but you saw something in me and maybe I didn't have skill, but, but you, you hired culture and trained skill, mm -hmm. which is very important for people who are just starting a business for people that already have a business. It's very important to surround yourself with great people. And you've always been about collaboration. You've always been about being creative with the company, the company, how many followers does MPH club have now? On Instagram, I think we reached like 300 and something thousand followers right now. Verified too. You got verified. Yeah, we actually recently got verified. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. The YouTube has been killing it. Yeah. You guys now We've have- been focusing a lot on YouTube, YouTube lately. Yeah, you guys have been interviewing celebrities, right? Like Yeah, it's a new show that we started, uh, the Starlight Spotlight. Uh, we got Robert actually interviewing a lot of cool celebrities that uh, land here and we service them. And we asked them, you know, sometimes they don't want to be in front of the camera. Sometimes they actually are cool with it. And we're like, hey, yeah. hey listen, we're going to drive you anyway. So is it cool if we just ask a couple of cool questions? And they're like, yeah, just let me know what the questions are and we make it happen. Yeah, you guys have some pretty crazy people. Like if, you, if you're not watching right now, you'll see I'm sitting next to a Ferrari hood. 
Okay, there's a hood on the wall of a blue Ferrari. What Ferrari is that? This is from a 458 Spider. Um, now, let me do a little background before you go on to the story. If we had this hood from the first day we opened up, I would have filled up probably three or four hoods of signatures from all the celebrities across the world. But unfortunately, we only took this hood in about a year ago. So there's um, maybe enough room for like five more signatures and it's completely filled. Yeah. Um, just to name a few, you could go see if you could read some of them. St oh, I'm seeing here for sure. I re is that Romero Brito? Yeah. Brito. Okay. Steve Aoki. Mm -hmm. um, Osuna, is he on there? Yep. Anuel? Yep. Uh, Marshmallow? Marshmallow, Dan Bazarian. Dan Bazarian. Um, <laughs> um, Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, TMT right there. Yeah, Damn. 50 and 0. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot more. But, There's a lot um, more, yeah. Yeah, like I said, man, if I had a couple of hoods earlier, uh, I couldn't afford them in the beginning when we first started the company, but uh, eventually, like a year ago, we, we decided to get one. Because honestly, like, dude, I'm not keeping nothing from all these amazing people I'm meeting. And the hood just came out out of a conversation I had at the time, and it just popped up, and we finally got one. Uh, we start filling it up and now i'm actually in process of talking about a second hood nice yep hey i just wanted to jump in real quick to tell you about how to train yourself in organization balancing your priorities developing successful habits and most importantly having a better mindset i'm giving free access to resources and materials on business management and self-development Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to get access. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at Hustle Inspires Hustle. Okay, let's get back into the episode. Do you remember when we went to that airplane like scrapyard? Oh my um, God. And we bought like a bunch of shit to make like uh, furniture for the office. That was a waste of money, but yeah, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> there was a junkyard on the airport here in Opelakam, and it was pretty cool because we make we made friends everywhere we go. So we, we met the guy who runs the junkyard, and um, we wanted to take it. We our vision was to take a wing, but we realized how big of we a get wing into a was. conference table, right? Yeah, we wanted to make a conference table, and we chopped off a small piece of a wing. It wasn't even the whole wing, and it was like I think um, thirty eight feet long. We had to get an 18 wheeler to move it. We chopped it off. We took the 18 wheeler. We found a guy who could actually make this happen. Then long story short, we realized we're moving. So it doesn't, it's not going to fit in our new office. So we just let it go. We let the guy have it. Fuck it never it. turned out. But luckily I found uh, aviation furniture on Registro Hardware. Yes. And they have some sick furniture. So yeah. we had a bunch of buying furniture that looks like it, but it's not the actual wing desk that we wanted to build. But yeah. that, that was a fun experience Guys, and, and a waste of money. <laughs> a lot of these things that I'm talking about, I'm actually going to link them in the show notes, like the videos and the pictures and the different things that we're seeing. So if you're listening, go to the show notes, go to the, go to the website, go on our social media, and you'll be able to see everything that I'm talking about so you could get an idea. Another thing that's sitting right in front of me is a big ass picture of Lee driving a Bugatti, which <laughs> leads us to an interesting story yeah. because... When, shout out to Bankrupt. He made that happen for shout, me. That's shout cool, out to Bankrupt. He cool does artist. some crazy ass art. Yeah, he also made that huge piece behind you as well. Yeah, the the, uh, the, the globe. The continents. Yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. And shout out to Mr. Debonair too. Uh, there's a few grenades and a few rifles on the wall of art. These are people that we've come across during our entrepreneurial journey who are creatives, who have contributed different things to the MPH Club organization. And it allows, it allows for the company to thrive and always be creative. So... We just talked about the hood. We just talked about the Bugatti. And the Bugatti is special to me because I remember, I think, I mean, it was probably like a year in a be of me being here. I was probably like 20 years old. And we were like, fuck, imagine like MPH Club having a Bugatti one day. Mm -hmm. oh. And we would be like, oh, imagine when we get an Aventador, yeah. right? Oh my God, yeah. And man, like we're here 10 years later and you guys have been moving Bugattis, Aventadors, like everything. Yeah. Like. Yep. You got your hands on everything. You, you you made it happen. And it's crazy because there's a lot of car rental businesses in the United States, but not everybody has the reach that you guys have and the cars that you guys have. And I think that's why you guys attract a lot of the people that you attract to come shop here because it's an affinity, right? You could get cars anywhere, but you can't get that experience that you get here just anywhere. You guys do amazing collabs. You guys did a collab with Jake Paul, was it? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Like his whole team was wearing your logo, your shirts. Yeah, we Every sponsored his whole fight, uh, that last fight he did. And he's got another fight right now, actually, very soon coming up. Yeah, that was cool. I remember watching, <laughs> I was watching Tiger King during the quarantine. Oh my God. And God. Doc, <laughs> you guys did a video with Doc, Doc Antles? Yeah, you? we went to his place, played with all the animals. What a phenomenal establishment he's got over there. It's insane. Oh, I've got a lifetime experience to hang out with tigers, uh, monkeys all over the place. 
Bro, okay, so there's one scene that I will never forget. I'm in the yellow Urus in the back of his house, and he's like, I'm going to bring the tiger out, and I want to take a picture with it. I'm like, all right, cool. And he's telling me it's a baby tiger. And I'm like, all right, you know, this is not a big deal. I have a, I have a little dog, so I could, I, I'm just comparing the two. He pulls up with this 250-pound tiger. I'm like, that's not a baby tiger, bro. And uh, the tiger, he opens the passenger door. I'm in the driver's seat. Tiger jumps inside like a normal procedure, and he walks right on top of me. He sticks his head out the window while he puts his paw, again, he weighs 250 pounds, puts his paw right on my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm screaming, but at the same time, when I made, when I finch, when I flinched, he stared right at me. We made eye contact, and I almost beat my pants a little bit. And um, immediately, the, the trainer just grabs him and sticks his head out the window, and we took a cool picture. And I got to show you this picture, it's insane. But that right there was just a lifetime experience. Just, have you ever had a tiger stare at you when he's literally an inch away? When he's breathing, you feel the hot air from his mouth on your, on your face. That was insane. Yeah. That was insane. That's, that's a great experience. <laughs> we, had, we had a crazy experience. With, was it with lemurs, with Lil Pump? We went, we went to, we went yes. with Juan. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that. We yeah. went with Juan and Lil Pump and his manager and a bunch of people to, to Jungle Island. And they brought out a bunch of lemurs and baby monkeys. And animals were just great. Animals are really cool. Um, I love that you have Blue here. Uh, if you guys aren't following Blue, by the way, it's Mr. Blue Dog on Instagram. Yep. It's Lee's dog. He's famous. He gets <laughs> off private jets. He hangs out with Mayweather and whoever you may think of. He became a little mascot for the company. <laughs> he became a mascot. But guys, outside of the celebrities and outside of the cars and outside of all that stuff that you may see online and you may find cool, the purpose of the podcast is to talk about work ethic. The purpose of the podcast is to talk about great relationships and being able to build long-term relationships. A lot of the time right now, people want instant gratification. And we've talked about that on the podcast before. I've known Lee for a greater part of probably 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we've always found a way to help each other out. You've connected me to so many people. I already lost track. I've done the same in exchange that I've already lost track. I remember last year we were in Bali speaking at a conference. Um, Michelle and I and some, some other people from the team, we went out there. And I had a presentation up and people wanted to know what projects I've worked on or what pe companies I've worked with. And I remember bringing up Metro Group Miami mm -hmm. and MPH Club because I was marketing director here and I was chief marketing officer at Metro Group Miami a few years after that. And you guys were, you and Bruno, I love both of you guys. So you guys are like family. And it always makes me so happy to see the shit that you guys do together because you guys are both fucking crazy. Bro. Yeah, they're, they're amazing designers, <laughs> by the way. Wow. Yeah. Bruno, Bruno's out here designing for the Miami Heat. Bruno's had yeah. stuff in the White House. Bruno hangs out with Dwayne, like LeBron and Dwayne Wade. Yeah. And you're on that same vibe and you guys designed some crazy crazy ass cars yeah. you guys designed some cars for steve aoki marshmallow and i forgot who else we've done so many uh, again but like steve aoki was uh, the biggest one we've done a couple of uh raps for his uh new albums that he dropped or for ultra when he comes for ultra and stuff i think it's I, I always talk about relationships right and partnerships because you felt like so you have your cars you have your clientele you saw the potential in metro metro is able to wrap cars you guys are able to advertise steve aoki is able to you know get his hype and advertise his album like all of these partnerships are totally doable for people you just have to find the opportunities right maybe you don't have the car maybe you're not steve aoki maybe you're not this famous person but what if you're the person that found a way to connect the dots yeah right what if you were able to put out a proposal or connect two people or connect three people that then flourishes into something beautiful and i think that's one of been one of the key successes of mph club is being able to do that being able to give people the opportunities like before we started recording this you reminded me of a project we did with juan where we wrapped the front of a Lamborghini Gallardo in like like clear coat. Was, yeah, clear coat, 3M clear coat. And then he's an amazing artist and he just went ham. All With Sharpies, like, was yeah, it? Yeah, like a whole bunch of Sharpies. <laughs> it, it was cool at the time, but today I will never do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that time we were just trying to think outside of the box, but yeah. I think you created a standard in the car industry, Yep. right? Because I remember when we first teamed up, we teamed up with CRM Jewelers back in the day when CRM Jewelers was like three months into business. Yes. Now they are fucking huge. Yep. And we were shooting like, watches on trays on steering wheels on on we we had a, show, a viral picture the, the, he, he bought like six seven watches we put them in the steering wheel took a picture and just like a regular picture just post on instagram next thing you know that thing went viral every it's single still going print. around bro yeah. i'm still getting tagged right on some of those pictures to this day i know and i laugh about it with my friends and the team because to think that something that we did 10 years ago is still being impacted and is yep. still relevant. It yep. just shows how ahead of our time we were. And we created a trend. We created a trend that people, like people on Billionaire's Club and watching Niche and Lifestyle Magazines. And bro, we had DJ Khaled, like 
looking that, at her stuff. Bro, our picture was his profile picture for like a couple months. Yeah. Jake Alley. Also, uh, Tyrese. Tyrese. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Off Daddy had that too. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah, no, there were so many people I lost track, the magazine articles. And I think it was funny because, you know, there's a lot of exotic car rental businesses in Miami at the time. And, bro, you guys sweep everyone out. Like, it, it is what it is. You guys came and you redefined the business. You made it cool to rent a car right yeah. you made it cool to rent a car and have an experience because the cars were always clean you guys always had a great experience there's always cool content there is um there's mascots around it just it didn't have to be the usual business so if, if you have a business right now and it's 2020 and you're really trying to think of what to do don't be so serious don't be afraid to you know really get funky and collaborate with artists or collaborate with the creators Funny you mentioned that i actually have a good friend of mine who started a um a blind company you know you put blinds on windows of course yeah so he's like oh, i can i can make blinds look cool i can't make you know i'm like you you sell cars you can make them look cool on instagram I'm like no bro you could do the same i could give you some examples there's a crazy mansions out there that you could take some sick content with with the blinds you can make a lifestyle video of, of somebody waking out of bed opening the blinds you yeah. can get creative with these things and he didn't really think of those concepts so that's what i try to bring to the table it's not just the cars that sell themselves it's bringing the lifestyle it's showing people this is what you could look like this is what you could do this is yeah. the fun part that's how you could feel this is yeah. how you could feel you know it doesn't have to be necessarily something that you want to just show off with no this is something that you could actually take your birthday a birthday weekend Spice it up a little bit. Yeah. Take a, you know, take a fun car. And that's something you could take a, a bucket list off your, off your bucket list. Thank yeah. You. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. I'd appreciate it if you could share, leave a review, and subscribe to the show. Visit hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app for more free resources, event invitations, and online courses to empower your personal and financial success. Learn about marketing, finances, business development, branding, strategic partnerships, and much more. If you're looking to further connect, check me out on Instagram or LinkedIn at Alex Quinn. That's A-L-E-X-Q-U-I-N. See you on the next episode.